The question itself says solve simultaneously. However, if I took that off, if I just said, here you go, here's a pair of equations. Right? You can know that what you're required to do is solve these simultaneously. Number one, because what else are you going to do with those unknowns? Number two, you must solve simultaneously. You have to include not just this equation, but this one. Because as I pointed out back in arithmetic and algebra, if you're solving equations and you've got some number of unknowns, you will need that number of equations to solve that number of unknowns. Okay? If you've got three unknowns, you'll need three equations. Here I have two unknowns, x and y. So that's why you're going to need both of them together. Okay? This is a simultaneous equations question, but before you can even get these guys to interact with each other, substitution, elimination, whatever, clearly you're going to have to call on your knowledge of index laws to manipulate these a little bit. Okay? So, let's have a think about this. Have a look at equation two. I think it's an easier one to start with. And just because this is fresh from my mind, for all of you, please, when you're working with simultaneous equations, say what you're doing. Even though it's not the main focus, I was, you guys were working on auxiliary angle in your AP ones, and one of the things you were required to do was find an amplitude and a phase shift, an auxiliary angle, right? But if you did not show me what you were doing, and you just leapt off and said, oh, I don't know, r is equal to the square root of something squared plus something else squared, and you didn't show me where that came from, guess what you got for that part? A big fat zero, because you did not show the logic and this number is already given to you, right? So I can just like make up numbers and I can say, oh, I don't know, let's just make r equal seven take away five. That's equal to two, right? It has nothing to do with anything. Just because you get the right number, if you do not demonstrate the logic, that's what this is about. So let's have a look at this equation. This guy here, 11 to the power of y minus x, will just unlock if you make sure both sides have the same base, right? Because then these two can talk to each other. So this already is put in a simpler form as it can on the left hand side. What will you do with the right hand side? 11 to the power of? Okay. Now here, by comparison of powers, I can now say same base, y minus x has to be negative 1. Are you happy with that? So you see how I've just called on very, very basic index laws here. That's why I chose this one. Now, you could call that equation 3, because that's the third thing that I need to label, but I'm calling it 2a. Why? So that I know it came from 2. If I call it 3, I lose that information. And guess what? When you're rushing it under exam pressure, you need to know where these come from. Because what happens if I call this equation 3, right? And then don't remember where it comes from, and then say put it back into here. What will happen? Well, look, let's have a look. y minus x equals negative 1. So I can take that, I can substitute it into this line here. I'm going to say, well, y minus x, I'm going to substitute for negative 1. And you're going to end up with this, which is true and useless, right? So don't put an equation back into itself. The best way to avoid doing that is label clear. I've dealt with equation 2. Now what? OK, I'm going to have to rearrange equation one, it's not quite ready for me to just like pop that in. Okay, So I'm going to go rearrange one. Again, it's important that you say this rather than just start doing the working because what I'm about to say really has nothing to do with this line that I just made. Right? What would you like me to do up here? What, what strategy was it that got us to something useful here. You suggested to me we should do something, Michael. Make all the bases the same. I want the bases to be the same because then I can get rid of the bases. That's the key, right? So if I can get the bases the same here, then I can take them out of the equation, right? So what would you let me to write first? Okay, I can change this to a two to the power of three. That would work just fine because all of these are multiples of two, okay? However, I don't want to just pick anyway, I want to pick the fastest way. I don't have to go to a base of 2, do I? Look carefully. Do you notice these are already bases of 4, right? Can I do something that would be helpful here? You can do 4, um, 2 to the power of 4, 4, yeah. So, so 8, right, is 2 to the power of 2. Times, now think about this, think about this, this is 4, right? 
What would you multiply this by to get 8? Just look at the power. You could write this as 2 plus 1. I'm going to write it as 2 oh. times 1 and a half. Right? Do you see why? It's going to be much more useful to me. Okay, Because this is 4 over here. This thing is 4. And I don't want to... Because that's that. Does that make sense? Does that make, I can't write 3 or 2. That's, I mean, it's the same number. Okay? It's fine. This is just 4, right? What have I got over here? Divided by 4 to the y and 4 to the... So what have I got here? 4 to the power of 3 on 2. What happens when you divide numbers at the same base? Are you happy with that? Am I missing something? I'm missing something, aren't I? Just look, look back. First line. Happy? Little things, this is what I mean when I said calculus depends so much on indices, right? If your mind is all on the indices, little things like this slip past you and you don't notice. You just trust someone who looks like they know what they're doing, right? Which usually is not me, it's usually your own brain. Okay, you can't afford to do that. Isn't it just easy to do like two to the power of three? Oh, these are all, you can do either of these. Like I can bring these down to whatever base I like. I'm just illustrating, think about what's quickest, right? I think this is fine. Uh, I have now here what I had here. Do you notice that? Same basis, so I can, I can just get rid of it. Are you happy with that? Do I want to leave that where it is, or do you think there's something I can do with this to make it easier? Are you, are you happy with that the way it is, or do you want me to change it? If I multiply everything by 2, I'll get rid of these fractions. That's a good thing. Is there anything else I can do? I'm not saying right or wrong. There's lots of ways to go through this. You could multiply it all by negative 1. If I multiply it all by negative 1, what does that achieve? Then you get the same format of y minus an x, and then you also get the minus 1 on both sides, so you can make them equal. Okay. Now, this is interesting. If I multiply this all by negative 1, I'll get this negative 1 here, and then I'll have these switched around, which is kind of nice. However, in this case, is actually not going to be particularly useful. Just think about this, right? If I have negative one here and negative one here, and then I'm like, cool, I have two equations, and they're from different places, that's good, so I combine them, right? You're gonna get, let's have a look, you're gonna get y minus three on two x on one side, and then you're gonna get y minus x on the other. Is that an improvement? Now, the thing is, it sort of is, but I didn't need to do that to improve it. I'm actually going to leave this as 1a, right? Just forget about all this indices stuff now, okay? The only part of the question that matters is here and here. Just look at those as if those are the first things that I wrote down. And I said, can you solve these? There should be a method that's trying to slap you over the face to say, look, this I'm set up for this. What can you do with these two equations? You can eliminate, can't you? What's the thing that is telling you? Use elimination here. Look, the y's are like lined up for you. I know they're in like different spots, but one's minus y, one is plus y. Yeah, which will, by the way, achieve, did you see? It's the same thing here. You're gonna eliminate this, right? Okay, so therefore, I don't need this. One a plus two a. Happy? What am I gonna get on the left? Have a look. Is that what I'm going to get? Yeah. How many y's am I going to get? Good. What are you going to get on the right? Zero. I'm adding one and negative one, right? Is that what you expected? No. No? Let's see what happens. Where would you like me to put this? I'm going to substitute x into something. Two? So 11 y minus 0 equals. So what's y? Minus 1. Hmm. And this is interesting. Pretty much no one said, oh, this is what I expected. 
So how will I know whether I'm right or not? I can, I can take these guys, I can put them back. We already know this will work in equation two because that's where you got it from, right? So where else can you put this? Okay. Eight to the power of divided by four to the power of. That's one divided by a quarter, which I'm pretty sure. So there's a lot of things to point out here. Number one, uh, by the way, like, like we pointed out, you could have just as easily have made these base two rather than base four, and that would have been fine. The advantage you would have gotten if you'd done that is you don't have to deal with fractions, okay? The reason why I knew this would be fine is because I sort of knew where the numbers are going, and I knew fractions would present us absolutely no problem, okay? It wasn't going to become a big garbled mess. Secondly, we all got to here and here and had this collective moment of doubt, okay? <laughs> Uh, it's okay to feel doubt, right? You just have to know what to do with your doubt and just put it in the right spot, okay? And it works perfectly. 